Hey friends, all across Discord servers, Facebook groups, and user forums, you always see someone post the weekly question, which studio headphones should I buy? Now this is a great question, but unfortunately it's almost always answered with a cringe-worthy barrage of misinformation and personal bias. This video is here to help you sift through all the noise to find the right headphones for you. Let's go. First of all, asking for the term studio headphones isn't really enough information to hone in on your needs. The very first thing to address is what application you're actually going to be using the headphones for. Even though we could break this down further, there are two basic types of large studio headphones out there. Now the first type would be closed back, where the headphones are enclosed around your ear and no sound or at least very little sound escapes, and then open back headphones where the drivers in each can are not enclosed and sound escapes out the sides. Now each of these two types of headphones serve critically important roles in the studio. The closed back headphones are commonly referred to as tracking headphones. This is because their main application is in recording vocals and acoustic instruments. The reason is, they excel in preventing any backing tracks or metronome sound from getting picked up by the recording mics. The second reason folks use closed back headphones, especially in the consumer world, is that they lower ambient noise, so if you're in the subway or a noisy environment, you can drown out the world around you and just listen to your stuff. Closed back headphones are usually what most folks think of when you say the word headphones, and I would go as far as to say that vocal and instrument recording is near impossible to do without a proper pair of tracking closed back headphones. So you might be thinking, well, why would I ever want to go with open back headphones given the advantages of closed back cans and their isolation? Well, let's take a look at the next application, and this is the application that most folks are asking about on internet forums, and that's which headphones should I buy for mixing? And this is where so many folks are getting it wrong. If you look up studio mixing headphones on Google or something, you'll notice that most of the search results will be open back headphones. If you remember anything from this video, remember this. Closed back headphones cannot be as accurate as open back headphones for mixing, no matter what the manufacturer says and no matter what you heard on the internet. This is because even though headphone speakers are directional and they're pointed directly at your ears, much of the mid-range and all of the bass frequencies will get trapped inside of closed back headphones and eventually bounce back into your ear. This trapping of sound causes a bunch of complications and sound issues such as comb filtering and low-end bass buildup. And yes, while the slight bass boost that closed back headphones can cause is fun and entertaining to listen to, it also creates a situation where it's very difficult to make good mixing decisions. Now instead of getting into the weeds with all the science around this phenomenon, let's focus on what matters. And when it comes to mixing, it's all about accuracy. For mixing, you want headphones that represent all frequencies as equally as possible. Or in other words, you want headphones that feature what's called a flat frequency response. This allows you to make good mixing decisions. If your headphones aren't giving you good information, it's no wonder that your mixes don't translate or sound good outside of your studio. Now there's a useful website called rtingsorratings.com, and outside of their in-depth reviews of many different headphones, they have a nifty feature where you can look and compare different sets of headphones frequency responses, which brings me to my next point. Many folks, when they go shopping for headphones, they're usually looking for cans that sound good. But if you're in any way serious about good sound and making great mixes from your studio, you're not necessarily looking for headphones that sound good, but rather headphones that are revealing. A good pair of headphones should reveal things in your mix that you've never heard before, such as various problems. So really, the experience of putting on an accurate, open-backed mixing headphone and listening to your unmastered music should make you say, wow, I've got some serious work to do. It's the same way with monitors. You don't want an audio system to flatter your mix. You want it to give you an accurate picture of what's there so you can make good decisions. Now you could be the very best mixing engineer and have a vast, deep knowledge of how to use EQ and compression, but if you aren't getting an accurate representation of your mix, you simply can't make good decisions. And now getting back to this concept of sounding good, much of the time consumer headphones that sound good are usually boosting pleasing frequency ranges while cutting annoying ones to make their headphones have more immediate appeal. For example, here we have the ultra-popular Beats Studio 3, a closed-back headphone with its comically bad frequency response. Here you can see with your own eyes how bad these headphones would be for any serious mixing application. And oddly, for the same price, you could grab the ever-awesome and affordable Bear Dynamic DT990 Pro with its smooth low-end and mid-range frequency response. 
These Beat Studio 3 consumer grade cans with their boosts to pleasing frequencies and cuts to non-pleasing ones will cause you to naturally over and under compensate for them in your studio. This is the principal difference between consumer and studio headphones. Now all that said, the truth is, is that if you're singing or playing instruments, you really do need two pairs of headphones. One for tracking and the other for mixing. The headphones I'm wearing right now are the awesome Bear Dynamic DT880s, which are a semi-open back design, and I chose these because they do a decent job of isolation for my YouTube videos and courses, but since they aren't fully enclosed, they have a pretty smooth bass response. These versus my Audio-Technica M50Xs. This is a headphone I see people recommend all the time for mixing, and it might be because people see DJs wearing them all the time, or because they do that nifty DJ folding thing. But the thing is, is that I could not imagine trying to mix on these headphones. Let's look at the response difference between these two cans. Now you might be wondering why I don't have a more expensive set of completely open-backed headphones. Well, that's mainly because I prefer to mix on high-end speaker monitors. And this leads me to my next point, and perhaps a question you've been wanting to ask. Can I mix my music on only headphones? Well, the short answer is yes, of course. But there's some things that you should be aware of. The thing is, headphones create an unnaturally wide presentation of your mix. When you hard pan something left or right, and you're listening on speakers, There'll be at least some manner of what is called crossfeed, where your opposite ear will still hear some of that hard pan signal. This doesn't occur in headphones whatsoever, and therefore it can be really difficult to know exactly how to treat hard pan signals with EQ and such. When mixing these signals with only headphones, the overall mix that you're hearing can mislead you and sound quite different when the frequencies you thought were isolated are actually competing with others due to crossfeed. Another thing to know is that speakers, especially speaker enclosures with three or more drivers, such as bass, mids, and highs, will be able to more accurately reproduce a flat frequency response than the single drivers in most headphones. On the other hand, room acoustics are certainly a challenge in bedroom studios, and high-end headphones are certainly more affordable, by and large, than high-end speakers. Now, if you're a bedroom producer using mostly headphones, here's a little advice. Even if you do most of your mixing on open back headphones, I would still highly recommend that you have some little monitors to check your mixes with occasionally. Because the presentation of only using headphones can really wreak havoc on your mix. And real quick, if you're an Ableton Live user or you're Ableton curious, check out this little webinar where I condense a bunch of useful Ableton information down into one bite-sized speed lesson. You can also learn how I can get you an incredible 40% off Ableton software. All right. Let's get back to it. Okay, finally on to some recommendations. I really like the Bear Dynamic brand. You get a lot of bang for your buck. The DT series are excellent headphones that are very consistent across frequencies for how much they cost. Then moving on to the Sennheiser brand, I'd consider them a bit of a step up with their HD series. Their HD 600 headphone is one of the most common open back headphones that you'll see in studios. And of course, there are a lot more bougie headphones out there, such as the insanely rad headphones by the head company, but those are getting into some crazy prices, and I imagine most of you are not shopping for $2,000 headphones. Now finally, you can test your headphones frequency response at this website called audiocheck.net. Especially the perceptual sweep will allow you to hear the peaks and valleys associated with the frequency response of your headphones. All headphones will have some inconsistencies, but those of you diehard closed back headphone fanatics who disagree with me, I challenge you to put on your flat closed back headphones and listen to this test. You will certainly hear the sound get louder and quieter based on the frequency response of your headphones as you go from the lowest pitch to the highest pitch. The truth is, open back headphones will yield a less bumpy ride on your frequency spectrum. It's just how sound works. And I do think it's worth mentioning that no matter what system you use to monitor with, closed or open back headphones, you can still get used to how the music sounds through them and still make decent mixing decisions. It's just exponentially harder to do with gear that's lying to you. Anyway, I hope that this was informative for you and it makes your mixing life easier. In my Mixing with Ableton course, we go over all the things that you'd ever want to know, including a whole chapter and multiple hours dedicated to getting the room acoustics in your studio dialed in. So check that out if you want to. Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to sub and hit the bell. I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks.